Let's dive into the features of SharePoint Premium, this new add-on that was announced at Ignite in 2023 that has a whole bunch of AI-powered features and some other stuff. I'm gonna start going through all of these features in this new video series. I'm gonna break them all down so that you know what, what, what these pieces are, how they work, how you would use them, what some use cases are for these things. I'll break it all down for you. Let's jump into the first one, and it's gonna be document translation. So the first one, as I mentioned, document translation. This is gonna be using AI to translate documents into other languages for you. You can both do an on-demand translation as well as an automated translation. So you can have this thing automatically translating to other languages. That is really, really cool. Now SharePoint Premium isn't really a new feature. It is a rebranded feature. It used to be known as SharePoint Syntax, Microsoft Syntax, Project Cortex. It's gone through a few different branding changes. But I believe SharePoint Premium is what the what we're gonna be using from now on. I think this is the final name. So let's just get used to talking about SharePoint Premium. So to set this thing up, the first thing we're gonna to want to do is go into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So from the home screen, you're gonna to go to the setup button and you'll scroll all the way down until you see, use content AI with Microsoft Syntax. Uh, now, okay. I did mention that SharePoint Premium is going to be the new name, but they haven't actually finished the old name, you know, updating that, getting rid of that. So you're still going to see some references to Microsoft or SharePoint syntax or Microsoft syntax. Even I get confused with the name changes. So you'll still see references to syntax in some places. Uh, now, funny, funny enough, not everything with Syntax was rebranded to SharePoint Premium. There was one piece that was rebranded to SharePoint Embedded. So I've got a video on that. Uh, check that out in my in my playlist. Uh, but what we're going to do here is if you haven't already set up Syntax, we're going to want to click on this Use Content AI with Microsoft Syntax. Or by the time you see this video, it might actually say SharePoint Premium. I don't know when that change is coming. So if you haven't set up the billing, you'll need to click on Manage Billing and configure your Azure subscription in the resource group that this will be billing to. Once you do that, this Manage Microsoft Syntax or Manage SharePoint Embedded eventually will light up. You'll be able to click on this. Now you're gonna see all these different features related to SharePoint Premium, uh, advanced content management. There's a couple of other things that are all rolled up into this feature, such as archive and backup. Archive I've already covered in a video. Backup, I do plan to cover that one. A lot of these other ones though, you will see. Uh, you'll see uh, the e-signature feature that you might've been hearing about lately. Uh, I plan on covering that, but right now, we're gonna go into document translation. Notice what we can do here. All you can do is change where this can be used. And by default, it's set to all SharePoint sites, well, all libraries and all SharePoint sites. So once you've enabled billing, this feature is live. This feature can be used. There is a cost associated with most of these features, if not all these features. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you go down through the features that you are currently using and switch them off. Now, most of them will have the ability to uh, just pick no sites so that it can't be used anywhere in your environment. In this case, we wanna set up document translation. So here, I'm actually gonna pick selected sites because there's one site that I wanna use this on and it's gonna be the HR site. So I can search for that here and I can pick HR. Uh, you could also upload a CSV file up to, is it 100 sites? Yeah, it's up to 100 sites. So if you wanna upload a list of sites, that way you can. So with my one site selected that I wanna use translation on, I'm gonna click save. And that's it. Uh, I could download my CSV if I wanna store that or you know use it later to add more sites to and just re-upload that. Uh, or I can, at this point, I can replace the site list. This does this doesn't let you add additional sites. This lets you replace the current list of sites that have document translation enabled. So if I pick a marketing site, HR just gets disabled unless I specify HR and marketing. 
So keep that in mind when you're using this. Uh, it might make more sense to use this with the CSV file method. That way you're always adding to the list of sites that have this and you don't have to remember which sites have it. But with this feature enabled on the admin center, we can jump straight into the HR site. Let's set up a new library, drop some documents and check this thing out. I'm just gonna create a new document library and we can call this policies. And then let's get some documents in here. So I'm gonna drag some files into here so we have something to work with. Okay, we've got our files. Now I'm not setting up metadata columns and, and content types and all that because I know you already know how to do that. We don't need to uh, cover that nonstop. I've got plenty of videos. If you wanna find out more about creating content types, content type publishing, the whole nine yards, I've got that covered. So what we're gonna do here is we've got document translation enabled on our library. At this point, what we can do is right click and you'll see an option here, translate. Let's click it. So it lets us pick a language. Uh, if we click on here, we'll see a list of five languages. Is that all it can do? Actually, no, it can't because it covers a ton of languages. There's a link in the description for which languages are covered by document translation. It's a lot. For instance, let's do, um, what about, we've got French, what about Canadian French? If I type in FR, uh, we'll see it filter down to two different Frenches. Uh, one is Canada. So let's pick this one and let's click translate. File submitted successfully. So now the AI engine is working to translate this document into French. Uh, it really is that easy to do on-demand translation of documents. Now this works on a bunch of different documents, primarily though the Office desktop app, so like Word, things like that, but also PDFs as we're gonna see here. This isn't the best part of document translation though. We're gonna be able to set up rules to automatically translate when different events happen. And this is when I, this is how I see translation being used the most in organizations, because this really is going to save users a whole lot of time with having to translate things. While we're waiting for this document to be translated, let's start setting up our next example. Again, this is gonna be the, the big use case that I see this being used for. For that, we're gonna be adding a column. Let this, uh, let, let's let this be a choice column. And for our choice, let's see, for the name, we'll call this status. Uh, choices will have draft and well, actually, to keep this um, nice and simple, we'll call the next one publish and we'll get rid of the third choice. That's all we need, draft, publish. We want a two state at least system. And let's save this. And we've got a new document now down here now. So Dignity at Work uh, was what I did a translation on, the on-demand translation. And we see another copy here uh, appended with the language code. This is the code that is used in Azure, which is actually where the translation occurs. So we see it appended with FRCA for our French Canadian uh, language translation. Let's click on this thing and see what it looks like. Close all that mess. So we've got this. Now, I don't speak a word of French. I've got no clue what this thing says, but here's what you should be doing. Somebody in your organization that does speak French Canadian, uh, or at least a uh, good enough French that they know exactly how Canada uh, varies with that language, they need to review this. You cannot take anything that comes from AI as uh, as as perfect. There, there may be issues here, so it does need to be reviewed by human eyes to make sure everything is accurate. Uh, AI is gonna be great for a lot of things like this that we don't want to have to do by hand, but always keep in the back of your mind, this has to be reviewed by a human. That way you know that if there's a mistake, somebody's gonna catch that. But we've got all of these different things here, uh, all translated, we see some formatting issues. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm kind of talking about where there may be a, a, a little bit of touch up work that is needed here. But other than that, it looks like a pretty good translation. 
Let's see what the original one looked like. Yep, and see at the bottom here, uh, all of our text uh, did stay within the uh, the table cell. So yeah, a little bit of cleanup there. That's actually a really good example of why you want to review AI content before using it. But let's get back into this second scenario. So we're gonna have translation running automatically for documents. Now, in, in this scenario, uh, HR is working on some policies. Once they are done with this policy in the native language, whether that's English or any other language, whatever your, your native speaker uh, is that's creating this, this content, once they're done with this final uh, draft, this, this final version, and they are ready to uh, publish this out to your intranet. First, what we probably ought to do is set some initial states on all of this. We'll set this to draft, update all the rest of these, edit grid view, everything's in draft mode. So the, our documents are finished. Let's take the, uh, the ACH payment collection processing file first. So they're done with this file. They're, they're ready to publish this out to uh, other intranets, other uh, intranets across the globe. So ready to go to Ukrainian, German, Spanish, anything else like that. Here's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna create a new rule. We're gonna automate, go to rules and create a rule. Now this rule is gonna let us automatically translate under different conditions. These are the conditions right here. We can trigger when data in a column changes, when a new file is added. So as soon as a file is dropped into the library, we can translate it. Or when a file is deleted, not exactly sure when you, you would use that one. That's a little bit odd, but we wanna do this when the status changes from draft to published. So I'm gonna do when data in a column changes. I can pick my status column, set it to uh, enter a value and then publish. So when the status changes to publish, we're gonna choose our action and it is create a translated copy in. And then here's where we can pick the language. Same controls as before, you have that list of five, but you could pick, you could type in whatever language code you want. And again, the guide will be in the description if you want to see what those language codes are. Uh, in this case, let's say, uh, we could just pick uh, Spanish here. And then I'll click create. So with this rule created, let's close this screen and let's open up the properties for this file. I'm gonna set the status to publish, which is gonna fire off that rule. So let's click on that, give that a minute to start processing. And in the meantime, let me just let you know, I am planning on creating some mini courses for all these different SharePoint premium and, and embedded topics, uh, all the different features here to do a much deeper dive into these things and go through some best practices, things to consider, stuff like that. You spend a lot more time on what's possible and what these different options all are. So if you're interested in that, check the description below. I may already have these courses live but let's see how this translation is coming along. All right, our translation is done. We've got it right here in Spanish. We can check this out and see how it looks. Uh, you know, potentially some formatting uh, adjustments may need to be made. And obviously it would be a little easier if you were doing this translation in Word, but you can still edit uh, PDFs in here. But just like I said before, all of this content that's translated by AI or, or manipulated by AI, all needs to be reviewed by a human because we really can't trust the AI this much to, to let it just do its thing on its own without human review. But all of that looks good. So document translation is such a very powerful feature. It's very simple to set up as you can see. I think it's gonna do a lot for time saving and cost saving within organizations. And it's one of the big reasons why I think this is gonna do really well, all these different SharePoint premium products. Now, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning was SharePoint point embedded. Uh, that was one of the syntax features that got moved actually not into SharePoint Premium, but into its own standalone product. And I've got a video that I've made about that showing how to set this thing up. So if you want to see how that is done, then you just click over into this video where I break down the whole thing and kind of explain what this thing is because it's a totally different product. Click onto that video and I will see you over there.